Kevin just mentioned uh, they're thinking of changing their AMS, which instantly gets everyone, all the AMS vendors in the room excited. We're like, ooh, Kevin, who? And then we equally go, oh, no, it's not me, maybe. And then we get pause and get anxious. So um, my name is Patrick Dorsey. I'm the Senior Vice President of Marketing at the Bill Highway family of companies, which includes Bill Highway, Greek Bill in the fraternal space, and Impexium in the membership uh, management AMS space. All the references or examples I'm going to use today are from the AMS space. Um, I've been in the association space for like 18 years. A little known fact is uh, I was hired when I first joined uh, the a uh, AMS or technology space. Kevin hired me. He's one of my first bosses. I woke up this morning. I had that like anxious feeling like I still need to impress the boss. Oh, so thank you, Mark. Get, make sure I move over to the, uh, the mic. So as Kevin mentioned, we talk about AMS, or we saw, excuse me, talk about AI, artificial intelligence. Like who's first thought like the robot apocalypse, like a Hollywood vendor, like that's the first thing that comes to mind, right? You can't help but think of it. When we were brainstorming how we we're gonna present, you know, for the session, it, a lot of people in the office were like, well, AI is gonna take my job, right? That's your first takeaway as well, and you get a little anxious. But I'm excited because like, if you think about a lot of the themes that we've touched on today about data, about the status quo, about personalization. These are all areas where when we're leveraging different artificial intelligence, different AI technologies within your AMS, with predictive analytics, with, like a, with Mark's company, you have a lot of potential to address what are these common day-to-day -day challenges that we face you know, as technologies or association execs in managing that member experience, right? So, when I was kind of brainstorming what I was going to present, I reached out to one of, uh, you know, I'm not, not going to mention her name, but an association technology consultant at, at Annual. And I said to her, I said, hey, friend, you know, I got this big presentation on AI. Are any of your clients, you know, you doing anything with AI? And, and she kind of laughed. She kind of was like, <laughs> no, no. And I said, well, how about next year, right? Like, do you got anything on, on the roadmap you're thinking about? And she's like, None of my clients are going to do anything for the next 50 years, right, with AI. And I joked back with her, I said, well, you're not a very effective CIO from the fractional CIO standpoint as well. But so when we think about today's presentation, I'm going to share with you some examples of AI. I got some use cases. They're kind of in flight. And one of my goals, right, and Kevin mentioned this earlier, like, what are the takeaways from today? My goal, right, my, the definition of a successful presentation today is you take some of these learnings and at least go back to your, you know, association and implement them within 50 years, right? So that's our goal. We got to implement it. You got 50-year roadmap. Kevin said a meet, maybe a little shorter time, but that's our goal. So let's get started. I'm not going to talk about a lot of the academic elements of, of AI and machine learning. Really, we're going to talk about just how do we leverage AI to engage members, right? And we, and we have all these different interests. When we think about our members, like one of my goals or one of my roles at Impexium is I sit down with a lot of our clients and we talk about the tactical and strategic initiatives they have in leveraging their AMS technology. And can anyone think what's the number one word that comes out of those conversations? And if you answer it correctly, you get some Impexium gourmet mints. But what is the number one word that is used in those conversations? Anybody? Mark, I'm going to call on you if no one answers. Mark? No. Aunt Kevin? I know nothing. Okay. The number one word that comes out of all these kind of strategic initiatives is engagement, right? Some would say it's the most used word, the most overused word. Sometimes I ask that question, it's innovation, it's engagement. Right? And it's true because engagement is really the, what sustains the association, how they reach out to their members. The challenge with engagement is each of my clients has a different definition of what engagement means to them, right? Not from an organization standpoint, and equally from their members' point of view, each of their members has a different definition of what engagement means to them, and more so how they want to be engaged, right? And that's where AI comes into play. Right, because we have all this data. We're sitting, we, someone touched on it earlier. We're sitting on this untapped potential amount of data within our AMS, our LMS, right? Our community platform, right? It's overwhelming. We almost don't know what to do with it. It's overwhelming from a staff standpoint of what we need to do with it, 
right? And this is where AI comes in, because AI is going to allow us to discover the tendencies, the patterns, the correlations that allow us to predict some behavior and maybe take that prediction and put some course correction into some of the activities so we can hit some, our initiatives, right? So really, we talked about the robot apocalypse and what's coming for AI. AI isn't really the technology of the future. It's really the technology of the present. And how can we leverage that within our current like, ecosystem, our current technology stack and business initiatives to achieve our goals? Oops, going the wrong way, excuse me. So let's talk about some of those different ways AI impacts. So if you think about your day-to-day -day life, Right, you wake up in the morning, got some smart speaker, tells you the weather, maybe tells you the ball, the ball score, the go, score from last night's ball game, right? Maybe even tells you your agenda. You go downstairs for breakfast, you upload some photos into Facebook from the weekend, AI automatically starts tagging your friends, right? You go to work, we talked about the Amazon experience, you buy a book, unintendedly, you end up with three, right? You're driving home, you get a text from B of A, they say, we see some irregular patterns in your spending habits, perhaps there's fraud, Go home, sit on the couch, you got Netflix, they're recommending different films, right? You got all these major brands, Netflix, Facebook, B of A, right? How do we keep up with that, right? They are delivering that personalized experience, right, that we talked about. It's the gold standard. All of their customers are our members, right? And our members are expecting the same, right? And this is where AI can come into play because, again, we, we have this overwhelming amount of data. How do we mine that? So I'm going to talk about a few examples of how AI is now being brought down, if you will, to the masses, and we can create those same memorable experience, that same hyper-personalization that our members are expecting, right? So let's talk about event management. I've been in this space for 18 years. I've never worked with an association that wasn't running an event, right? But over the last three years, all of my clients, right, and I'm sure many of you have had to rethink your event strategy, right? Certainly from a COVID standpoint, we all had to go virtual, Right? But again, as we pointed out earlier today, or the keynote speaker Tiffany mentioned, can't go back to the status quo. Right? So different organizations are thinking about how can we leverage events, right? really kind of the sacred cow of associations, to meet the needs of our members. Right? And one of the ways AI, or one of the ways one, uh, one of our Impexium clients is leveraging AI, is they're looking at different ways to, if you will, break out the, 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 their annual conference to have some smaller conference. But they didn't know where. They didn't know what, what would be the content in those conferences. And so they're taking a lot of AI, a lot of the data that they have, overlaying that into, into the AI and allowing them to see where are their patterns of behavior? Where are their geographic you know, uh, locations of their members to identify different sites just in the US, right, where we'll have the higher predictability of attendance. Right? And then they're taking some of those learnings and they're allowing them to develop content. What would we include there as well? Pretty exciting. Maybe I'll come back next year and give you some results. Another key is the member matching. We talked about this, right? Like we have some member you know, issues or the different uh, student members weren't growing, right? So member matching, as they looked at their events, they realized as we move from virtual back into the live you know, uh, event standpoint, how can we find ways to engage some of these younger members, right? Maybe we can find different ways to match them. Again, it's overwhelming the data to do that manually. We can put that into, you know, predictive analytics with, you know, association analytics and acumen. We can put that into the AI. We can start to see patterns with our members. So we can take some of our most, if you will, enthusiastic members and member match them with some of our younger members, right? And maybe get them excited. This has branched into a whole separate conversation about from a mentor standpoint, how can we take this technology and really put it beyond just the annual conference? Pretty exciting. Newsletters, one of the key, probably the low barrier of entry from an AI standpoint, how can we personalize that content, right? And someone mentioned, I think Sherry mentioned it, like associations have a great brand, right? They're already a trusted advisor in, the, in their space, in their industry, right? And yet their members, are going outside of the association for all of this content and information, right? And if for Amit, the uh, Raza IO, likes to call this the association habit. Why can't we create some content, personalize that content, so our members are coming to us for that content, right? And the best way to do that is taking AI and say, let me deliver a personalized experience, all the content you want. We can put offers on top of that so that they might be able to 
uh, attend events. There might be special products that they might need that support their past behavior, click-throughs in the content as well, right? A lot of technology out there. That can be applied to your website as well. We mentioned it earlier. Um, if you know Wendy at, at RAPS, the Regulatory Affairs Professional Society, doing great things with their content on their website. So when members come to their website, they're only getting content that's specifically based on their behavior, their role in their organization, their history with the association, right? Pretty exciting things. So I'm gonna get into some of the case studies right now. And specifically, members also bought, right? This is the Amazon experience. Like we've all been there, and there's not probably one of us who hasn't gone to Amazon, received that one book and wanted to buy three. But there's a lot of opportunity there to create that upsell, specifically around uh, different products. And I'm gonna reference one of our large organizations uh, in the legal space, using this from a continuing education. They have both professional they have both professional as well as trade, a trade organization from a membership standpoint. And when you look at from their continuing education, great non-dues revenue opportunity, right? But they had never leveraged kind of the Amazon experience. So taking that, they kind of started mining their data, running it through the machine to offer that. The first three months out of all the transactions of people that were buying those continuing education course, they had a two to 3% uptick of those transactions people added another course. As the data started to get a little smarter, right? The following three months, so the second three months, they got just over 5%. And they're like, oh, we're onto something here. And they got a little creative. They started offering, because earlier in the, in the process, it was just, we're gonna offer you another course. And they started taking other products and said, so you bought this course, you might also enjoy this course, but what about this product that were outside, if you will, maybe an event registration? And the last four months, or a four-month cycle from mid-August to early September, they achieved an eight months, or eight percent. Eight percent of the transactions of people that were purchasing these courses, right, added on something else. And this was really exciting because, and they weren't sure, was it just the data was getting smarter because we changed maybe the, the recommendations? But what, the, what it opened up for them was, not only were people taking more courses, right, and it touched on that engagement, but it opened up a whole nother revenue stream about we, now we have different products to offer them. Because once they clicked on and purchased that other product, the cycle continued. If you bought this, you might also bought that. So from a case study standpoint, you know, at their peak, right, and it's still ongoing, right, so it's just started in February, they're at 8% over the last four month cycle. And that was like, as I mentioned, from uh, mid-August to September, right? And increased, if you will, that transaction, checking out of the shopping cart by over 40%. So we're talking non-dues revenue, tangible benefits, right? Of, of something they didn't really have to do, right? It was almost like a set it and forget it. And the data starts mining itself, right? And again, they're providing that personalized experience that ultimately is gonna lead from an engagement standpoint as well and beneficial, right? There, or one of their earlier kind of critiques was like, oh, we can't do that, right? We're not a for-profit company. They haven't received one complaint, right? So, which is great. I think a lot of times, we, you know, again, that kind of sacred cow as associations, nonprofits, we're always afraid to act like a, as a for-profit, right? Oh, we can't do that. We can't do that to our members. We're not a company, right? And yet all, their, all the Amazon you know, customers are members of your society as well. Talked about chatbots, a um, great way to personalize customer service. Again, display data, get uh, data in front of people, answer some quick questions, benefits 24 seven. A lot of people are already leveraging this to improve customer service as well. A great benefit as well, it allows staff then to focus on, if you will, the more complex issues as well, right? They can personalize that experience. Again, we don't wanna replace that human element, right? Because it is a very much a human experience but where we can, if you will, you know, meet the expectations of our, our, our members on their time is how we wanna manage that. Our second case study really is about the engagement score. And this is where AI can really put your engagement score on steroids, right? And it addresses uh, an age old issue, right? The lapsed membership, right? And how do we use the data to better understand why members are, are lapsing versus not? Right, 
And at Impaxium, we have a customer uh, in the professional, you know, in the manufacturing space. Uh, and they were having a, a lapse membership issue before COVID, right? But it accelerated in COVID. I'm sure that's very uh, standard for many. 10, 20, 30, they were getting up to 100, you know, lapse memberships per month on an anniversary basis as well, right? They had to put this in the machine, better understand what's working, what's not. Why are they, why are members lapsing, right? And at their peak, right, they had hit this bottom, right? And that's really in, in 2021, they've had to better understand what are we doing, right? And this is where the AI allowed them to see the patterns based on past behavior of what was working and what was not. What, what were the tendencies of the people that were not renewing versus those that were, right? And then they were able to take that data and through some predictive analytics, I think they're actually using uh, uh, Acumen as well, they were better understand what are the sequence of events from a membership standpoint that are valued? What are the member benefits that we should be leveraging, right? And it allowed them to take that correct, corrective action to at their bottom in 2021 over a three month period, change and improve that retention rate by 8%, right? And again, it's just a start. So it's gonna allow them, to, if you will, to course correct on what's doing that. Also empowers the staff, if you will, to get ahead of it. So they have this big dashboard now that shows this running score of members that are kind of at risk, if you will, right? And it allowed them to be more proactive through so, some marketing automation and, and, and power automate. They're now able to have, what are some of the member benefits we should be sharing with people three and six months before they're up for renewal, right? And then once they renew, what is the same thing that we can do afterwards from almost an onboarding, even if it's part of the renewal? And again, there's so much data there, but the patterns that AI is identifying for are giving them a better indication of what are the member benefits they should be leveraging versus not for different roles within the association, or excuse me, different roles that people have in their professional life, different age groups. So they're able to mine all that data to course correct pretty specifically. So how do you get started on this AI journey, right? With any technology initiative, right? One of the first things you wanna do is identify your objectives and goals. Right, that's key, that's pretty standard. You can't just say, hey, let's leverage AI, right? It's, it doesn't make sense. Hey, we got marketing automation, what should we do, right? If you have a community, we, if we build it, they will come, right? We've all heard that, it doesn't work, right? So let's better understand what are we trying to solve? Is it a, re a retention issue, right? Is it about event registrations, right? Is it a revenue issue, right? They're, they're, it can be applied. One of the key themes of this presentation or just any AI initiative is the data. You need to better understand what data you're collecting, what data you need to collect, because that's really gonna be the, the, if you will, the fuel for this engine, right? And you gotta start somewhere, right? And so it, it's not, not too late to start. And then start small, right? It's easy to say like, hey, let's take the shopping cart and have like, if you bought this, buy that, right? Or others have purchased this, have purchased that. Maybe just start within like an event registration, or maybe it's just certain types of products, or maybe it is just the continuing education. But start small, better understand what's working, what's not, look at the data, and then you can expand from there. Pretty common sense, but I often people say, yeah, I'm ready to jump in. And they're, they're really kind of jumping into the deep end without necessarily a plan, better understanding their own data, and necessarily understanding what they want to accomplish. So with that, I'll kind of, tried to keep it within the 20 minutes, which is not usually one of my skill sets. Um, but I'll open up to any questions. No questions. Well, thanks, Patrick. I, I do think there are a couple questions. Um, so when you think about artificial intelligence, and you know, Sherry talked earlier today about uh, digital a strategist and everything else, but who should own that initiative? This is a common dilemma, you know, with Impexium clients, right? Because is it an IT issue or is it the business owner issue? We felt we've seen a pattern without AI yeah, within our kind of network of, of, of companies. If the business owner really should own it, because they understand the data, they're controlling what is that business outcome. Obviously, you need IT support. Right, you might need integrations to take some of this data and leverage it you know, with all your different tech stack. But ultimately, my opinion has gotta be driven by the business owner 
right? The membership team, the events team, because they're controlling that objective. They really understand the member's point of view, right? They're probably having a little closer interaction. I think I saw a hand up. Was that Harriet? Okay. No, I don't think there's a... So my question is, what are sort of the preconditions that need to be in place in an association to begin exploring these sorts of tools? Because if you're already in a, in a command, do you have to be fairly mature in order to be able to do some of this work? The question was... Can you hear me? The question was, what needs to be in place before you start this initiative? Like, you know, and, and I think... You know, the slide that we have up here is one just very high level, like have a plan, right? We want to define some specific business objectives. But I think the key element in, in kicking this off is really about your data, right? And better understanding what you have, what you might need to collect, because the AI is going to run. That's the gas in the engine, right? And so your data needs to be, could be a cleaning exercise. Maybe you're not collecting the right data to better understand what we need to collect that will help fuel, if you will, the, the answers to the questions that we're trying to get. Is it fair to say that your systems need to be fairly integrated and that it would be helpful to have a data lake in place in order for this to be started? I don't think it's required, but it was helpful, right? So there's a, there, it certainly makes sense that you want to leverage all the data within your AMS, your LMS, your community, all of those platforms, right? to get it into some type of data lake or analytics tool. Yeah. That, so the AI, is, yeah, this is a great question. The AI is not just can't work on itself, right? It's really gonna complement some of the technologies that you already have in place, right? So that from a data warehouse, data lake standpoint, that's where the AI is really gonna be most impactful. And that's really a great place to start. Did that answer your question? It does. Great. Oh, go ahead. I have a quick question. Um, how, uh, how well does this technology scale downward? Because I work with a small organization. I'm sure that your answer can be, um, it, it'll work for any size organization, but I think it's obviously more effective with a larger organization. How well does it translate to an organization with maybe 3,000 members, maybe half of whom are engaged with the websites? You're right, so the standard answer, it will work with everybody, right? But you're right, but there's, there's different challenges if you don't have the right staff. There's gonna be different challenges if you have 3,000 members and half of them are kind of the passive, the lurkers, right? And you don't have this data. But this is a great opportunity, right? If the right initiative in place is defined to take AI and not necessarily burden the staff to figure out how do we engage? What is the best way, what are the patterns the tools, the different types of communications or the member benefits to engage those other 1,500, right? Maybe it's part of that mem uh, the, the matching program or the mentoring, you know, to better understand. Maybe it's that same, uh, we saw it earlier, the sacred cow of like, maybe the 1,500 aren't going to the annual conference because they'd have to sit down at a white tablecloth and have an awkward dinner, right? Maybe they're looking for something different. But you're right, we, they, you have to balance that within the day-to-day -day operations of the organizations. But there's a lot of technologies out there, whether it's from the newsletter example, whether it's just from the event standpoint, that I don't want to say are plug and play, but have a lower hurdle from an adoption standpoint. It might be the first step to increase engagement, perhaps with those 1,500, right? Maybe it's just about content in the newsletter, and that's a great way to look at it. Maybe it's the content on the website, maybe it's from a customer support standpoint, and you can leverage some chatbots. Like with anything, you know, we just can't turn it on and it will work. There's no kind of sacred wand, right? I think so. What uh, I was talking with Greg earlier, we, we, we were talking about different technologies. Like, and if it was easy, everyone would be doing it, right? And if it was really easy, it'd probably be really cheap, and I wouldn't need to be up here talking about it. I, right, so, right, we've all had the negative experience with the chatbot, right? And I think the chatbot can't be all or nothing, right, from a customer support standpoint. So if I implied that, I apologize. I think what the chatbot can do is there's some benefits, right? Um, it's a 24-7 tool, right? Sometimes people just want a quick answer, right, from a customer support standpoint. 
I think it then also allows an organization, right? And this could be in Pexium, it could be an association, to then, if you will, take some of the questions and make sure they're put in the hands of the right people at the right time, meaning from that personalization, right? Whether it's maybe the VIP member, they're all VIPs, we recognize that, but maybe it's a more complex question. And now you've freed up staff time to, if you will, go that extra mile for that more complex answer. And so some of the, some of the quicker answers can be kind of magically found, if not predicted to be like, hey, it looks like you're asking and looking for this, right? But it's not, a, again, it's, it's, it, is a, it needs to be monitored, right? Because then you need to use probably a focus group. Um, what we found is you kind of take it for granted and then you can get into this spiral of like, that's not what I wanted, right? And you're kind of like knocking on the computer like, hello, is anyone there, right? So the, the, all of these things need to be like tested, right? And then you gotta take, what did we learn? And then go back and reapply it. I think one of the things that people take for granted on the chatbot is like the answers that are displayed have to be well thought out, right? If the answer is poor, right? Like obviously that doesn't help if it was someone that is answering it verbally or uh, over the chatbot. Right, so the answers have to be, and you usually have to put in some type of feedback, was that helpful? And then again, you can mine that data to say like, is this working, is this not? What do we need to do? Because again, it's a very human element, they're reaching out for a reason. So we don't wanna, if you will, depersonalize it to the extent of like, we're not achieving our goals. Great question. Again, chat box, I'm gonna take